Hey everyone, it's Nick from Living Lightly, and I'm gonna do a quick uh, Airstream update. We haven't um, we haven't done a video update since leaving North Idaho a couple months ago, and so we've made quite a bit of progress. And uh, just want to fill you in. So, one of the main projects over the last few weeks is trying to figure out where the leaking was coming from. Um, uh, after the last update, I think I put in the uh, the interior wall and it didn't rain all summer and then when fall came around as uh, as the rain started falling and snow there was uh, water coming in um, right here by the door and over here and over here and I thought I'd replaced the leaks with uh, with the window but uh, once I got here to Kansas I ripped out this uh, this wall and you can see on the uh, the aluminum skin, the inside there, you can see water streaks. And um, come to find out, uh, this panel was replaced sometime uh, with the previous owner. And they had replaced it with a bunch of um, uh, pop rivets. So all the pop rivets were leaking. They would leak down into this uh, U-channel. U-channel would just low, run to the lowest spot where it could leak out onto the floor. So um, got a buck rivet kit and been drilling out all of the old um, pop rivets and replacing them with buck rivets. And this is one of the spots that was leaking pretty bad, the porch light. Um, so I bought a new porch light and installed it. And as I installed it, I noticed that the, uh, the existing holes that were there, um, there wasn't enough aluminum skin um, for it to hold down uh, with this guy. So I had to drill another hole to really suck, sink that in, but seems to be keeping out the water good. Uh, you can see a couple of the holes that we have left that we haven't um, done the buck riveting to. Um, I just got new buck rivets today, so we should uh, get those slammed in there shortly. Here on the front we uh, took off the old rock guard and um, actually ended up taking the glass window from here into the to the bathroom. The, the bathroom was plexiglass and so I put the glass back there and then I cut a piece of plexiglass to fit up here and put an aluminum frame on it. And, uh, the hole here, that's for the, uh, the fresh water. Um, we got a new uh, new cast, that's not cast, but it's, a, it's an aluminum um, piece that's gonna go in there. The other one was just kind of, uh, the threads didn't match up with the cap and the cap was galvanized and was starting to rust and just kind of a mess. So we got a new one of those. And then the spot where the uh, the old antenna was, we're, we're patching that up because there's quite a few holes there. And then let's go up on the roof. We'll show you what's up there. This summer I installed this fantastic fan roof vent and the, uh, the AC unit was here um, uh, when we were driving from Idaho, but the, uh, the, the Montana wind caught the the plastic shroud and it went flying off into the abyss and it just looked real gangly and ugly up there so we pulled off the air conditioner um, we have a window unit that we're going to use in uh, the really hot months when we need it to slide it in the front um, this way it, it just kind of well I like the way it looks better and um, less weight so the AC is gone we replaced it with the a galvanized lid roof vent and then we got another fantastic fan to put in the front so we got the two fantastic and then just a, a standard roof vent which really um, opens up the interior nicely and then here we had a, a radio little bracket for uh, radio antenna CV antenna and then where the wires went in and this was all leaking so uh, we got that patched up good to go so the roof is uh, the roof is good Let's go on the inside. Before we go inside, I'll show you a few things out here. This is where the um, propane furnace vent was, and there was a big stainless steel plate with vent holes in it. And we took out the furnace. We're not going to use it. We're going to use a uh, wood stove instead. Uh, we've decided to make the uh, the land yacht uh, a mobile off-grid um, living pod. And so instead of a propane furnace, we're going to use a wood wood burning stove. So we just patch that up, and then the uh, this little this little latch was all corroded, and and uh, so we got a new one of those on along with the little latch receiver. And then down here we replaced the uh, the aluminum that was underneath there just to kind of finish out the trim. 
This is our new uh, fresh water little spout. Get ready to put that in. And then we got a new, uh, new water pump. And then we got a new water tank um, that should be here tomorrow. Um, so that's all going to be nice and fresh. Um, the old tank, there were some holes in it. I tried to repair it with some fiberglass, and it just was it was looking kind of sketchy, so I decided not to not to risk it. And you can see the back side um, where the buck rivets are going in. And then our, uh, our vents there. Then back here, I had installed the toilet. We thought we were going to just use the toilet in the black tank, but since our plans have changed and um, since we're going to try to make the, the Airstream um, off-grid as possible, we're going to use a composting toilet and we're going to reconfigure the way the uh, the sink and the, the toilet where the sink was right here, the toilet over here, then the cabinet over here. We're going to put the composting toilet right here and then the sink's going to drain directly into the, uh, the black tank. The uh, 66 Airstreams do not have um, gray tanks. So another benefit of having the composting toilet is we can use the black tank as our gray tank. So the composting toilet is basically going to be a urine diverting um, toilet. So we have a seat here. And then this bucket will be open. There will be a separate funnel that will divert the urine. And then basically as your number two goes in the bucket, you sprinkle a little uh, um, wood chips or peat moss on it. And uh, there will be a little 12-volt fan. kind of keeps it dehydrated. Um, from what I understand, it doesn't smell. And uh, this five-gallon bucket should last quite a while. So we plan just to have about, I don't know, four or five of these buckets that once we fill it up, we'll seal it off and then just kind of carry it around until we can get it to a place where we can either bury it or like in some woods or take it to our, uh, our garden's compost bins and let it, let it cook there for a while. So that's the bathroom. Now since the last uh, video update, we actually got new, <clears throat> new tires. Uh, on all four wheels and then um, uh, repacked the bearings, checked the bearings, got new bearing seals, checked the brakes, um, kind of went through all of it. Uh, we were waiting for axles. Um, we were trying to get out of the northwest until the, uh, before the snow came. Snow started coming, so we canceled our axle order and uh, hit the road. And they seem to do fine. We'll eventually get new axles, but um, yeah, it did fine coming out. And in the back here, you can see um, the window. That was the window from up front. Just put it back here, put new gaskets in it. And then um, still got quite a bit of work to, uh, to uh, seal the back here. So that's it for uh, this update with the uh, 66 Overlander off-grid mobile living pod. And uh, if you'd like more information, you can check out our website, livinglightly.com. And we'll put another update when we have the uh, rest of the buck rivets done, the interior skin on, and we start doing some plumbing. So until then, farewell.